High Commission of Republic of Bangladesh in India called a Remembrance Day meet about 25th March genocide that was carried in 1971 by Pakistani forces. According to Wikipedia, the genocide in Bangladesh began on 26 March 1971 with the launch of Operation Searchlight, as West Pakistan began a military crackdown on the eastern wing of the nation to suppress Bangladeshi call for self-determination rights. According to Al Jazeera and a report titled Women and Climate Change in Bangladesh by Margaret Alston claimed that during the nine-month-long Bangladesh war for independence, members of the Pakistani military and supporting Islamist militia from jamaat e islami killed up to 3 million people and raped between 2 to 4 lakh Bangladeshi women. According to Bangladeshi and Indian sources in a systematic campaign of genocidal rape, in the conference, High Commissioner of Bangladesh in India, Sayyid Mozam Ali, briefed about the incidents and why this should be remembered. Well, uh, the night of 25th March is the night of genocide, which was perpetrated on the Anam people of Bangladesh by the military government of Pakistan. People of Bangladesh had expressed their desire, had exercised their vote to bring into power Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and his party Awami League. And their platform was six point formula for autonomy. But Pakistan refused to recognize the voting rights of our people and refused to call the National Assembly. And as Bangabandhu was trying for peaceful transfer of power from the military authorities to the elected representative, the Pakistani army unleashed a war on our people. And hence the Bangabandhu declared the war of independence for our country. And that was in the early hours of 26th March. So tomorrow we will be celebrating the Independence Day of Bangladesh, 26th of March. But I want our younger generation to remember what had exactly happened on 25th March and when the genocide was perpetrated on the people of Bangladesh. Our whole effort is we would like to make an appeal to the international community for the proclamation of 25th March as a genocide day, so that this kind of violation against human rights never takes place anywhere in the world. Because if we do not take action on this kind of crimes, then it will continue to be perpetrated. Well, uh, first of all, uh, as you know, Bangladesh High Commission in, in Delhi is primarily accredited to the government of India. And you have seen a very high level representative from the Indian External Affairs Ministry who represented the country at this particular ceremony. I have also uh, 70 odd missions who are concurrently accredited to Bangladesh and whose ambassadors are residing in New Delhi. A number of them have come and they have sent their representatives. In addition, we had representatives from the media representatives from the academic circles, as well as Indians from common walks of life. And all of them will return with a fresh memory of the genocidal act which was committed on our people. Well, India-Bangladesh relationship, I'm very happy to say that after Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's last visit in April has now gone beyond the strategic level and it now includes virtually all areas of cooperation between our two countries. And I think uh, one of the significant aspects of the visit was when Prime Minister herself honored the martyrs of the Indians, martyrs and the Indian soldiers who had laid down their lives for the independence of our country. This was an unprecedented recognition in the history of mankind. We believe that our relationship will go strength to strength. And I do believe, as, Prime, as President Kavin has declared, Bangladesh as India's closest neighbor. So we should proceed not only to develop closer relationship between our two countries, but also to promote stability, peace, and harmony in our neighborhood and beyond. Thank you so much. Professor Dr. Sanjay Bhardwaj, who is head of South Asian Studies in Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi, told it was a genocide carried by Yahya Khan and he never be punished. He also elaborated the relationship between India and Bangladesh. Uh, you are correct. In fact, the young generation is not aware what happened in 1971 on 25th March. But the uh, older generations who had been uh, instrumental in the liberation war of Bangladesh in 1971, who had sacrificed uh, the lives, more than 10,000 Indian soldiers sacrificed life in uh, 1971. And the people they have, uh, the Indian people, they have uh, extended their support 
uh, all materialistic and humanitarian and and moral support to the Bangladeshi in 1971 they are aware but the young generation of course they are not aware much so such kind of programs like today uh, they had uh, they had uh, talk about 25th March and they have shown the movie uh, this is a wonderful I think that uh, Bangladesh government should continue these things everywhere uh, uh, that one of the uh, Nigerian High Commission uh, ambassador was asking what happened with uh, uh, Yaya Khan after uh, the war uh, was there any trial uh, against him I said that no trial was against him he was living he was enjoying his life uh, in, in Pakistan so these are these kinds of programs will certainly bring awareness not only uh, the Indians or Bangladeshis young generations but all over the world they will know what happened on 25th March the what kind of genocides had been done where in one single night 7,000 people were killed and uh, you can say on the course of nine months more than three million people were killed three lakh women were women were uh, violated uh, in, in this course of time so that this is a, a, a crime against the humanity it's a genocide that should be remembered the, all the people in the world that that should not happen and the western world they kept their eyes closed that uh, they should also be exposed at the same time there are debates about 1971 why india supported and what the issue is entirely that the bangladeshis they were fighting for democracy they were fighting for secular uh, spirit they were fighting for bengali nationalism they were fighting for social justice and india also believe on the same values and on the, those values on the basis of those, those values we extended our support to the bangladeshi people to get liberated and that spirit uh, in, in in a in a in, after an interval that interval was again the military regimes had come into power in bangladesh after that interval that spirit had come again and now the two people or two governments india and bangladesh they are sharing the same ethos same values and we are working closely for the uh, amnesty patients of the people for the uh, we, we are uh, we are fighting against the poverty we are fighting against the unemployment and we we are working to bring the development uh, between the uh, two countries and and particularly when you will say that after coming to power uh, Madam Sheikh Hasina in 2009 that India and Bangladesh had done wonderful that you can say that we are on the highest uh, 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 of the relationships that we have we have shared we have sharing not only just uh, ethos and values but we are sharing the resources we are helping each other in the developments we are fighting against terrorism we are we are fighting against the insurgency jointly that kind of spirit is required and that i'm sure that this kind of spirit will bring the uh, the eastern south asian uh, countries a prosperity not only in bangladesh not only in india but including bhutan and nepal so it's a wonderful uh, spirits and the two countries what they have thought in 1971 now we are on the path of realizing those uh, those visions that uh, that witnessed in 1971 in another camp we met an old man of 78 to give us an account of the